Hello, friends. Surprise! You get me today, not Father Fred and Mary. Um, they are celebrating their anniversary and are right now on a cruise to or through Paris. Um, so hopefully having an amazing time together. And so you have me this Friday and you'll have Bob next Friday and then Fred will return again with Mary to um, take up their usual place of Fridays with Fred. Um, but for today, let us pray together. Page 103. Oh God, make speed to save us. O oh Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Our psalm today is Psalm 91, verses 1 through 4, on page 719. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High abides under the shadow of the Almighty. He shall say to the Lord, you are my refuge and my stronghold, my God in whom I put my trust. He shall deliver you from the snare of the hunter and from the deadly pestilence. He shall cover you with his pinions and you shall find refuge under his wings. His faithfulness shall be a shield and buckler. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Our, our reading from today is from Paul's letter to the Ephesians, chapter 2, verses 1 through 10. You were dead through the trespasses and sins in which you once lived, following the course of this world, following the ruler of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work among those who are disobedient. All of us once lived among them in the passions of our flesh, following the desires of flesh and senses, and we were by nature children of wrath, like everyone else. But God, who is rich in mercy, out of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead through our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved, and raised us up with him, and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, so that in the ages to come he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace in kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. 
For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not the result of works, so that no one may boast. For we are what he has made us, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand to be our way of life. Here ends the reading. Paul's letters are always fun, aren't they? Uh, especially when you have to listen to them and not, not read along. Um, it can be kind of hard to hear all of those words and to make sense of them. Um, <coughs> pardon me. I am, I am hearing all of this in the, in the lens of the ascension which we celebrated yesterday. The day where Christ ascends to heaven and assumes all of this earthly world with him, um, redeems it, gives it all of its grace and perfection, perfects the world through his ascension. Um, and so thinking of that, hearing this hearing this scripture read on the day following the Feast of the Ascension, I hear this, um, these words, all of us once lived among them, um, all those other people being them, uh, in the passions of our flesh, following the desires of flesh and senses, and we were by nature children of wrath, like everyone else. But God, who is rich in mercy, out of the great love which he loved us, even when we were dead through our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. We have this belief because we believe in the power of God. We believe in a God who can raise from the dead, who can assume all that is and transform it into something grace-filled and beautiful, even, even something as horrific at, as death at the hands of violence. Oh, we believe in this God. We believe in this God yesterday. We believe in this God today and forever. Because without that belief, well, it sure does sometimes feel like we are just <sighs> children of wrath. This, um, this year in moving out of the Ascension, moving out of Easter into, uh, into this new season that Pentecost will bring, this new season of ordinary time, I think I pray that it is anything but ordinary. That we, like Christ has taught us, will be able to transform our ordinary lives into something extraordinary. That we can see God in every moment. That simply being able to breathe in fresh air, to see a sunrise or a sunset, um, all those cliches, <laughs> smelling the roses, all of that, I don't know, being with family, all, all of these things can be not ordinary, but extraordinary. And that, that because we have this faith in Christ, that we have been given a gift that moves us beyond this life and into something greater, that transforms us into the children God has created us to be, the children God desires for us, not because of anything that we do, says Paul. It's not about our works. It's about God transforming us, taking us, making us better than we ever could be on our own. I have to have faith in that. I will always fall short. And 
I believe that I have the Spirit of God within me, and that Spirit will fill in all of the gaps. I believe that for myself, and I believe that for the rest of God's creation. So let's pray, shall we? Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. Lord, hear our prayer, and let our cry come to you. Let us pray. Blessed Savior, at this hour you hung upon the cross, stretching out your loving arms. Grant that all the peoples of the earth may look to you and be saved. For your tender mercy's sake. Amen. Now I invite you to join with me in prayer for those on our parish prayer list and for any who you would like to add. We pray for the rest and repose of the soul of Roy Malone and for his family. For Nancy, Tim, Judy, Alan, Dick and Margaret, Jessica, Karen, Warren, Betty, Bing, Ted, Jan, Pam, Fred, Sabrina, Charmaine, Spencer, Bennett, Rose, Julius, Shannon, Betty, Rick and Robert, Bella and Cindy, Dave, Steffi, Jane, Josh and Laura, Cindy, Franklin, Joe, Phyllis, Patrick, Todd, Debbie, Tom and Ruth, Melissa, and Janet. We pray for God's vision of a beloved community to become our vision for this world. We pray for all those in Uvalde, Texas, for those in Buffalo, New York, for all those who have been shattered and broken by violence. We pray for peace in our nation and in the whole world, for deployed people everywhere, for medical and emergency personnel, for all first responders, for teachers and parents and students. And we pray for, student, for scientists working on solutions for COVID-19 and for the continued successful distribution of vaccines. And today we give thanks for Larry Britton, Greg Rennekamp, and Brian O'Donohue, who are celebrating birthdays, and for Michael and April Improta, and Lindsay and Robert McCarty, who are celebrating their anniversaries today. Happy birthday, happy anniversary. May God continue to bless you, keep you, fill his, send his light and love and grace upon you. And may each day now and moving forward be filled with love and joy. I don't think, it, I don't usually do Friday announcements. I don't think that I have anything I need to really bring to your attention other than come out to church on Sunday. Uh, 8 o'clock, 10 o'clock combined outside. Hopefully the weather will be good. I haven't looked at a forecast recently, so cross fingers and prayers on that. Um, and then 5 o'clock p.m., uh, Bob will be preaching. And um, yeah, Pentecost is next week. Make sure if you have not yet done so to let Gretchen know if you can read in a different language because we love hearing the Pentecost spirit. Um, through each of you reading in all of the many tongues. So please let us know if you have um, the ability to read in another language. Uh, we'd love to add you to our list so that you can join your voice into the cacophony. Um, okay, that's it for now. So happy Friday, happy weekend. See you Sunday. Let us bless the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.